Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, humanoids of all descriptions, welcome to the channel. I'm Cap, this is my place. In this month's firearms video, I'm going to name, explain, and demonstrate administratively loading and unloading your firearm, drawing from concealment, changing magazines, holstering, and have a brief discussion of stance. Let's get started. So I'm going to start with the topic of stance because a lot of people get wrapped around the axle on this topic. Some people want to look at everyone else and scream that, hey, Weaver stance is the only way to go because of A, B, and C. Other people want to turn around and scream equally loudly, that, no, isosceles because of D, E, and F. Look. This video is aimed at you if you're a new shooter. I'm going to tell you something that's going to probably start people typing in all capital letters down in the comments section. Stance isn't really that important. Are you standing? Are you stable on your feet? Are you able to safely and efficiently draw your firearm from the position you're in? If the answer is yes, your stance is good. Should you probably pick a stance as a new marksman so you can learn in a consistent fashion? For a while. But at some point, you've got to give that up and you've got to start moving around. You're going to have to take a class someplace from a certified professional, and that's going to require some movement at some point and that's going to change everything about stance. So isosceles is good for some things, weaver is good for others. What I do as somebody who's been a marksman professionally for 22 years is I change it off. Sometimes I shoot weaver, sometimes I shoot isosceles, sometimes I shoot one position with upper body and another position with the lower body. Eventually, you're going to have to do that, but just hold off on that and don't worry too much about your stance. Because again, if you're stable, you've got a good stance. And here's the other thing. This is a chair. Do I have a stance now? Does this mean that because I'm sitting, I can't shoot? Well, if I can access my firearm, I can, and I don't have a stance. So don't get wrapped up on that issue. Now let's administratively load and unload a firearm. So for administratively loading and unloading your firearm, we're going to need some equipment. We're going to need your firearm, your holster of choice. We're going to need a device for holding a spare magazine. We're going to need your snap caps, which I advised you to purchase in a previous video. And hopefully you've gone out and you've purchased an extra magazine and painted the base red and use it only for snap caps for training purposes. So <clears throat> because we assume that all firearms are loaded, I'm going to go ahead I'm going to clear the weapon. I'm going to inspect in the chamber area and in the magazine well looking for live ammunition and brass. I'm going to insert my chamber flag through the ejection port into the chamber and into the barrel. I'm going to let the slide forward so it doesn't fall out. Now, this is verified as unloaded for the other stuff that we're going to do. Mag holder. An empty magazine, which I verified as being empty, and you can see there that it is in fact empty. That spare magazine is going to go 
somewhere around the three o'clock, the nine o'clock, excuse me, on my belt, I'm going to obtain my spare magazine with the red base that's full of red snap caps. This will not be mistaken for live ammunition. And I have my holster of choice. So, my holster, when I insert the firearm, will contain and completely cover the trigger guard and the trigger. So, I'm going to take my firearm, slide lock to the rear, I'm going to take my magazine. The three fingers on my left hand, along the spine of the magazine, my index finger on the tip of the bullet. In this case, a red snap cap. The firearm in my working space, right here in front of me, I can see what's going on in front of me while I focus my attention on what I'm doing with my pistol. Remember, the human eye can only focus at one distance at a time. I'm going to take my magazine, I'm going to fully insert it into the grip, and I'm going to listen, in this case, to hear a clip home. I can give it a pull, it doesn't come out. At this point, it is your option to either slingshot the slide or to use your thumb to press the slide stop down. There are a lot of people with very strong opinions on this. I've done it both ways in the 22 years that I was paid to carry a firearm. It doesn't matter which you do. So, this firearm, being a 1911, has a safety on the frame I'm going to press it up until it engages. That not only locks the trigger mechanism, but it locks the slide in place. I'm then going to take my holster and insert the firearm into the holster. I snap the snap. The firearm is now secure in the holster and the trigger and the trigger guard are fully encased in the holster and as you can see here this molded leather holster is molded around where the safety lever is in the engaged position so with the snap engaged the holster is going to hold the safety in place along with the detent and the spring that normally hold it in place at this point it's your option to remove the magazine and administratively load another round of ammunition to top your magazine off. Safe to do so because again, the safety is on, the safety is being held on, additionally held on by the holster, and the trigger and trigger guard are fully encased in the holster itself. Now, carry positions. Appendix carry is very popular these days. If you wish to use appendix carry, feel free to do so. I have a pre-existing back injury, two lumbar fractures, and a displaced disc. I don't wish to put extra weight on the front of my belt, pulling my injured lower back out of alignment. So, I carry at three o'clock. I don't recommend going any further back than four o'clock. Make sure you pick a belt that's compatible with your holster. Not all belts will hold on. Not all 
well, all holsters and all belts are not compatible. Some clips will not hold us securely to certain belts. I'm wearing a nylon riggers belt right now. Some holster clips won't hold on to that, but will hold on to a leather garrison belt and vice versa. You're going to have to experiment just like I had to. I now have a full size handgun and as you can see it doesn't print. So we're going to draw. The sides of the body are sympathetic. That means they work together to help you balance. When you walk you put left foot forward your right arm goes forward and your left arm goes back. So, when you draw your handgun, I shoot right-handed because I'm right-eye dominant. I need to give my left hand something to do to make the draw stroke more efficient, and efficient is what you're going, working on becoming. Not fast. If you rush, you're quite likely to have a negligent discharge. It happens on a frequent basis, and if you go on YouTube, Reddit, LiveLeak, or any of those types of sites, you can find videos of people shooting themselves because they decided to let their ego get the best of them and show off in front of a camera or in front of their friends. So, my firing hand sweeps the garment to the side. Simultaneously, my non-firing or support hand comes up here to the area of my solar plexus. I, gri I grasp the arm as high as I can, which allows me to mitigate muzzle flip. Recoil goes straight back, muzzle flip goes up. They go hand in hand like conjoined twins. Anytime you draw, your weapon comes straight up out of the holster, rotates 90 degrees towards the target. Your support hand comes up underneath the trigger guard and then occupies this space here, not taken up by the firing hand. This is all the contact you have with your handgun. Again, my safety is still on. And because it's not time to shoot yet, my finger is away from the trigger guard. I don't recommend putting your finger up here in the ejection port. This is the chamber of your barrel. It's where the bullet's being fired from. It gets hot. Don't touch it. Don't. No. So. We now have an acquired grip. We're going to push the firearm straight out. If it's time to shoot and you have a safety to disengage, disengage your safety. You can then place your finger on the trigger and actuate your trigger. You'll notice I said actuate. Some people want to argue that you should say squeeze. Some people want to argue that you should say press. Look, just actuate your trigger mechanism without disturbing your sights. Now we're going to move on to changing magazines. So we've been shooting. We fired the last round in our magazine. What will happen? firearm ejects the spent cartridge and the follower, which is the bottom plate of the magazine on the inside, pushes up on your slide stop. Think of the follower as the floor of an elevator. It's going to lock the slide open. Now you're going to reach for your next magazine. So, your slide has been locked to the rear. You're going to release your firearm with your support hand, and you're going to turn your firing hand and your weapon 
so that your palm of your hand is facing you. As you press your magazine release, you're going to sweep your garment to the side and reach for your spare magazine. As you draw, insert. If you have time to give it a tug, go ahead. You've ensured that it's locked in place. I'm not teaching you to be Wyatt Earp or John Wick or whatever action hero of the moment there is. This is just basic firearms instruction. You can give a little tug here on the magazine. It's locked and you can either thumb down on the slide stop or go ahead and slingshot it. Engage your safety. Reacquire your target because we're doing target practice. Reacquire your target. Disengage your safety and actuate your trigger. So we've loaded, we fired, we've changed a magazine. Holstering. Drawing your firearm is a gross motor skill. Holstering is a fine motor skill. We're not talking about utilizing a duty rig. We're talking about drawing from a concealment holster from concealment. There is nothing wrong with using both hands to holster. So, I've decided I'm going to stop shooting. Perhaps I've still got ammo in the, in the firearm. Safety engaged. I'm going to come down here with both hands. My support hand is going to find the opening of the holster. That allows me to place the muzzle of the, of the firearm in the opening of the holster and to slide it down in and to, slap, to snap my snap, resecuring my firearm. So now we've loaded, we've fired, we've changed magazines, now we're going to administratively unload. Not surprisingly, that's the opposite of administratively loading. I'm going to unsnap my holster from my belt and draw the entire holster and firearm from inside my belt. I'm going to remove the magazine. Removing the magazine removes the source of for ammunition. I'm going to draw the holster off of the handgun I'm going to disengage the safety. I'm going to place the heel of my palm against the slide and the entire length of my thumb against the slide. This gives me plenty of friction against the slide, including its cocking restorations. And I'm going to form a pocket with my hand. I'm going to turn the firearm upside down. I'm going to press the slide all the way to the rear. I now have the chambered snap cap in my hand. My slide's locked to the rear. I can inspect the chamber and I can inspect the magazine well. I can reacquire my chamber flag, insert it, ease my slide forward so this chamber flag is locked in. I've now confirmed and shown everybody because they can see the chamber flag that my firearm has been cleared. Obviously, and I'm going to state this even though it should be obvious, the chamber flag occupies the chamber and therefore no ammunition can be chambered in the chamber. This takes practice, just like dry fire. So. Anytime you take your firearms out of storage, you're doing so with intent. Right now, your sole intent is to have a good training experience. You're learning to actuate your trigger without disturbing your sights. You're learning to safely and efficiently draw and holster your weapon. Remember, firearms training rewards preparation. I assure you, 
it's safe to do dry fire indoors in your dwelling. Before coming in here, I checked my office that I use as a studio to ensure there is no ammunition in the room. Ammunition is locked up in the other end of the house. You saw me on camera checking to make sure that the firearm was unloaded. You saw me ensure that my second magazine was empty and we demonstrated that this magazine with the red base has only red snap caps in it. Again, preparation is rewarded when it comes to firearm training, both in safety and in results. So, get out, train, take things slowly and be safe. There's no need to be in a rush. We'll see you next month for another firearms video. New videos uploaded every week. Please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a politely worded comment in the comment section if you have a question or if you disagree with me. And we'll see you next time.